future SCC member Brittany Marino spoke about her views from seven years later. I don't think that Michigama has ever really truly apologized for the atrocities that they've committed, for the wrongs that they've done, or for the people that they have hurt. The very first thing that we did was we apologized. We apologized to the Native community. We apologized to the Michigan Daily. We even went to a Board of Regents meeting. We made a public apology to the entire university campus. Today, Michigama apologizes for this breach of faith. More importantly, Michigamo also sincerely and deeply apologizes to the members of the Native American and university communities to whom these actions has, have caused great offense. What has transpired in the past cannot be forgotten. However, we, as the Michigamo Class of 2000, exert control on the present state of this organization. The Class of 2000 is committed to working with the Native American community and the university administration to better understand the nature of our pre previous misjudgments and to ensure that these errors will never be repeated again. That wasn't good enough for um, the activist community. And that's also Michigan's idea of an apology because they say, you know, we're sorry we did things in the past, you know, which is the emphasis is this is not in the past, this is stuff that you did now. So, like, that's not the kind of apology. And I guess also what we said to them is that we don't want an apology until you change the name. Because just keep saying, hey, you know, we're sorry, when you have that name, you're not really sorry. So you've got to make the step first, you've got to change your name, and then we'll accept an apology. That real apology has never taken place, at least not in my time or during the times of anyone of the alumni that I know. We made the apology, and it was important that we do so, to, to demonstrate how we felt about the misappropriation of Native American culture over the years. But what we were not apologizing for, and I think this is very important to note, we were not apologizing for what we were doing in the year 2000. We were not apologizing for what we were doing in 1999. That in fact, when I joined Michigama, I joined an organization that was free of Native American practices. The fact is, is that given the events that were happening at that time, given the sit-in, dialogue didn't happen um, and it didn't happen I think for a couple different reasons. One, I think what was happening with the sit-in was being um, being sensationalized a little bit. Um, certainly, um, you know, certainly the message was, you know, coming out from the SEC that the group was racist and was continuing to do these practices. That wasn't the case. Um, and in the process of trying to understand each other's viewpoints, um, you know, there was a lot of more anger and hurt that I think prevented us from doing, from having really effective dialogue. So you have to appreciate the complexities of this situation. That Michigama wanted to, to communicate and work directly with the Native American community. But that we had this element, the SCC, who would consistently show up to our forums, consistently want to block our individual conversations with members of the Native American community. That the SCC also had positioned themselves to the university as the main negotiating group, not the Native American community, but the SCC. Again, who were the SCC? Yeah, the interesting thing about representing students of color on campus is there was no one place we represented students of color on campus. And in fact, because no one really knew who they actually represented, no one asked those hard questions, they were able to hold on to a position of power far longer than they should have been. They were still spreading this lie that there were these Native American types of things out there on the tables and that they flipped through thousands of photos up in the Union, but they didn't show people the photos that were literally from a week before that showed us up there in that seventh floor with nothing Native American in sight. They also make reference to the law of the jungle which they claim is an Indian poem. The Law of the Jungle was actually brought to the organization from the football team. And the Law of the Jungle is written by Rudyard Kipling. It's not a native poem. But you see, in their position of power, whatever they were saying to the people in that room, most people accepted as the truth. Not only that, you know, they had this, this sick, you know, caricature, figurine, 
you know, that they superimposed on top of our book and gave it to the Daily that ran it on the front page to say, look, look at what these sick guys are doing today in 2000. It was ridiculous. The last memories we have of the den are the videos that the SEC took. And I think it's important for people to know what was actually going on in that room. That the, the spectacle that was displayed with artifacts from the native community on the table and, and the impression that Braves organized in the wigwam was entirely fabricated. Now, were, were, there, were there plaques and pictures on the wall of our alumni when they were members of the organization commemorating them? Absolutely. But you have to understand what happened in that room every Monday. This is a group of 25 student leaders People that sit in class next to you, people that organize with you for the good of Michigan. We would come together every week and we would talk about what we're doing at the university and the good things that were available for us to do together. And at the same time, I have this one Michigan member telling me, I need to see the, who wants to see the videotape of us giving a tour because she's never seen any of the items up there. So I'm saying, well, you won't mind if you remove them then, will you? I mean, you've never seen them, they're not yours, we planted them, right? So let's just take our own stuff back, you know, but they didn't want us to do that. Then she said to me that she needed to be there to make sure that we weren't mishandling the cultural objects. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I mean, obviously I had to leave because I was going to punch her right then, but...